Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with the real Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. From author Donnie Bovine comes the book, How to Be a Success Champion, available on Amazon. After years of living other people's dreams, author Donnie Bovine decided to jump out on his own and start a business, thinking it would be easy. Instead, he had a rude awakening and quickly understood that he had spent 20 years being an employee and had no idea how to be a business owner. His business was tanking, and he was on the brink of losing everything when he decided to fight for business freedom. In this must-read and life-changing book, author Donnie Donnie Bovine shares with readers his story intermingled with lessons learned from his mistakes and his failures. And how to be a success champion, you will find advice the author received from mentors and how he went from zero to a six-figure business. The author walks you through the steps of how to get out of your own way, how to play the game of business and win, find your strengths, how to network effectively, how to build a personal brand, how to create champions for your business, how to get great at sales, how to take complete ownership of you and your business how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon in both kindle and paperback editions order your copy right now it makes a great book for corporate events too how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon hello hello and welcome to the all in podcast with nate pale of course, I am your host, Nate Pale. Today, we've got an exciting guest, Bob Berg, uh, author. Bob is a sought-after speaker at company leadership and sales conferences, sharing the platform with everyone from today's business leaders and broadcast personalities to even a former U.S. president. Bob is the author of a number of books on sales, marketing, and influence, with total book sales of well over a million copies. His book, The Go-Giver, co-authored with John David Mann, itself has sold over 950,000 copies and has been translated to 28 languages. His and John's newest parable in the Go-Giver series is the Go-Giver Influencer. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic, a past member of the board directors of Furry Friends Adoptions Clinic and Ranch in his hometown of Jupiter, Florida. Welcome to the show, Bob. How are you? I'm good, Nate. Great to be Um, with you. Awesome to be here. So, you know, I I reached out to you to have you on as a guest because um, I was recommended your book, The Go Giver, from from a, a colleague of mine, friend of mine, and I loved the, the premise of giving with expectations and building networks. What inspired you to write this book? When did you kind of know that this message resonated with you and, and you discovered it and it needed to be shared with the world? Well, many years ago, uh, back in the the mid-90s, my first book came out. It was called Endless Referrals. Uh, The subtitle was Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And it was really for entrepreneurs and salespeople who knew they had a great product or service. They were proud of that. They knew the value they brought to others. But they may not have felt comfortable in the process of going out and creating these relationships and and, – and so forth. And so really it was a, a endless referrals was a how to book. It was a system basically on how to mm-hmm. uh, find the right people, meet the right people and create the relationships with people to the point that people felt so good about you. They knew you, they liked you, they trusted you, they wanted to do business with you. They wanted to refer you to others. So, but it was a, a how to book, but through the years I'd read a lot of parables and I don't love reading parables because, as, as you know, stories connect on sort of a deeper level. 
uh, than even how-to books uh, typically do. And so I, I, for years, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could take the basic premise of endless referrals that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust and put it into a, a parable form. Mm-hmm. So when sort of asking the question, so in titling it, what is the, um, what is the essence of that person, that entrepreneur or salesperson who can create those know, like, and trust relationships both quickly and sustainably. We said, well, they're givers. They're, they're always looking to give their focus is on giving value to others. So Mm -hmm. coming up with a name, the go giver was, was pretty easy, but the best thing was when John David Mann uh, who I knew as editor in chief of a magazine I used to write for, and I knew his very few people at the time outside of a niche industry knew John. Now you know he's co-authored tons of bestsellers, but with all sorts of different people back then, few people knew his brilliance. Unfortunately, I was one of them who did. <laughs> I asked John if he would be the co-author and really the lead writer because he's a storyteller. He yeah, you know, really. Um, and fortunately, he said yes to that, and we collaborated on it. And that, that's really how The Go-Giver came about. It was, it, it was sort of the philosophy behind the how-to of, mm-hmm. of referrals. Yeah, I think what resonated with me was, like, everybody knows what a go-getter is. Like, you, you can identify, like, who's a go-getter. But when you hear the words go-giver, you're like, what, what does that mean? And when you read the book, there's a character, John, and I would describe him as a go-getter and probably frustrated that things weren't, you know, working out as he had hoped with his, his business career and sales sales way until he learns the go-giver advice. Were the characters in the book based on actual people that you knew and connected with in your real life and, and the lessons you learned that you learned similarly along the way? Some were, some weren't, uh, some were kind of, um, combinations of different people that that both of the the authors knew a lot of the stories that we use i mean it was a work of fiction totally Mm -hmm. but many of the stories and examples we used actually happened to either john Mm -hmm. to myself and we just put it within the story attributing it to one of the characters joe was sort of the every person you know we've all been joe or josephine right Mm -hmm. that person who kind of you know, was young and ambitious and aggressive and had great potential, but whose focus was on the wrong place, you know, was in the wrong place. Right. Go was a, a go-getter, which is, is fine, but he was really, he was also a go-taker, right? He yeah. was the guy who you owe me and everything, you know, was about me and meeting my quota and, and, and so forth. And, and he needed to, you know, kind of relearn that and, 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 focus on making it about others, not about himself. Because let's face it, nobody's going to buy from, from any of us because we have a quota to mm-hmm. me, right? They're going to do business with us because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so, which is fine. It means that we as the entrepreneurs and salespeople have to place our focus where it belongs on pleasing the other person. So Joe is sort of everyone. We've all been Joe or Josephine at one time or another. Mm-hmm. Indar, the main mentor, he was loosely based on a, a man uh, from Toronto, Canada, by the name of Bob Proctor, who is a, a giant in the personal development uh, profession in terms of abundance and prosperity. Mm-hmm. And so we modeled, we thought of, you know, Bob's uh, stature and that gray hair and the deep voice and the, you know, the way he just had a, such a great way of sharing himself with people and who, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we modeled him off that. Um, you know, others were, you know, like I said, combinations of people and, and, and so forth. So, uh, so yeah, while the, and, and Rachel was just, uh, who was the coffee person, she was totally just a, a made up character. So, so it was kind of a, a little of, of everything mixed in. Yeah. So, so a lot of people talk, um, like when I was reading the book, I was like, yeah, there's, there's always somebody like you're reading a, a book of fiction. You're like, I wish I knew somebody like a Pindar that would really take yeah. you under your wing, yeah. show you what to do and really connect you to these ways. And it's, it's always, it always feels like it's so fortuitous and the, the stories and lessons they, they say, but maybe in real life that, that person's harder to identify and they're hard to find and you don't necessarily know who is going to be your mentor. How do you reach out, locate a mentor, find someone, and then what should you as a mentee 
bring to the table to, to help support a mentor? Well, I think in finding a mentor, and which is important because a good mentor can really cut your learning curve time by years. Um, and I think what happens that, that a lot of people do, which is sort of counterproductive, though, is they will they'll see someone who it might be someone in the community or someone online or someone who whatever who they really respect and, and they'd like to have mentor them and they they'll just kind of approach them and say, hey, will you be my mentor? And the reason I find that to be counterproductive is because the chances are if you want this person to be your mentor, so do a lot of other people. And a lot of other mm-hmm. people are asking and they only have a limited amount of, of time. And when you just say, will you be my mentor? There's almost an air of entitlement, like as though that person owes you their time, you know, and, and, um, and I think it, it kind of positions the person who asked that way as not being as desirable a person to, to mentor. On the other hand, because really it's like saying to somebody, Hey, will you share with me 30 years of your life success, even though you don't know me from a hole in the wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, you can approach pretty much anyone who you would like to, to um, have guide you. And you can, but I would do it a little more humbly, pro- possibly by saying something like, you know, I, I know you are very busy. And if this isn't something that you have time to do or would even choose to do for whatever reason, please know that it's totally understandable. I'm yeah. wondering, uh, may I ask you one or two very specific questions? Now, when you do that, you've done a couple of things. First, you've respected the process. You haven't in any way come across as, you know, as though you're entitled to, to just do that. You're letting them know, hey, I understand you are busy and it may not be something you want to do. And, and if it's not, totally understandable. Uh, that's mm-hmm. giving them the out or the back door. But what you also did is by asking if you could just uh, yeah, by present one or two very specific questions, this person now knows you're a serious person. You're going in there with an agenda. And in this context, agenda is a positive word. In other words, you're going in there knowing what you're going to ask. You're not just looking to, you know, pick his brain like, you know, like so many people ask. So, so they know you've thought about it. You honor the process. You have an agenda. You have something in mind. Most people in that position will say, sure, uh, you know, go right ahead. Or, yeah, let's talk. Now, everyone? No, of course not. But not everyone has to. Mm-hmm. But, but you're going to have much more success that way. Now, when when you do speak with them, uh, make sure you don't take up unnecessary time, but you get right to the point. And at the end, you let them know how much you appreciate them and that you look forward to applying what they said right away. And that if you don't mind, I'll keep in touch and let you know how things are going, which they'll say, sure, of course. Now, that very day, I would write a personalized, handwritten note of thanks. Just a brief one. And again, mm-hmm. just... You know, dear Mr. So and so or dear Ms. So and so, you know, thank you so very much again for taking time out of your day. Uh, I, I realize how busy you are. Your advice was priceless. I look forward to applying it and we'll let you know how things work out. Best yeah. you sign your name, number 10 envelope or whatever envelope, hand stamp, you know, regular stamp, send it out. Again, it just says to them, you took it seriously. You know, yes. that you appreciate it. And, you know, again, and another thing I would suggest doing is find out what their maybe favorite charity is. And again, you can look this up. Don't ask them. You look, look it up and very easy to find. And um, let's say they are, you know, on the board of directors of a local uh, pet uh, shelter. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you make a, a small, it doesn't have to be anything big, but a small donation in their name. Uh, it'll get back to them that you did that. You're not doing it to kiss up, but just to, again, let them know you respect the process, you're grateful, and you want to be able to give value to them in whatever way you can. You know, now you become the kind of person this person wants to work with. And so three weeks later, whatever, whatever, you might send an email or follow up by phone and, and let them know how something worked out. Maybe you have another question. Here's the thing. If in time, a mentor protege relationship is supposed to develop. It will. Mm-hmm. If not, it won't. You can't be attached to the outcome, yeah, right? For sure. Yeah, it might be that person, might be someone else, or might be uh, that you have a few people that you know are going to be there for a little bit of time, and what? Who knows? But but that's really, I think, the best the best way to do it. 
I, I would agree with that. And I think a, like not always, but sometimes people seek out mentors that aren't a right fit for them. Oh. It's like, it's like, Hey, this person's got this level of credibility in my industry. They should be my mentor. And this might even be a problem of structured mentor mentee relationships. Like if you're part of an organization group and say, Hey, who wants to join a mentor mentee relationship? And you go, okay, we'll put these people together. Um, but I find that th- like you just kind of meet uh, on your scheduled day the effort doesn't get put in prior or after. Um, and, and people are a little bit uh, unsure what they're supposed to do. Like the, the mentee might be like, oh, I'm meeting with somebody. He's going to give me uh, all this knowledge. And the mentor's like, hey, what do you need help with? And neither one of them come prepared with an agenda. And so it just it just maybe fizzles and maybe it, it doesn't work out. So, or they're not the right fit personality-wise, or they really don't put the attention into it uh, sure. that, that it oh. takes. So I I think it just has to be um, evaluated a little bit better and let it develop naturally because, you know, sometimes your mentor isn't one person. Sometimes it's multiple people that help you out with different things. You talk um, a little bit about uh, influence. How has that evolved since the original book was written? And I know you got a new new parable in the Go-Giver series is coming out called the Go-Giver Influencer. What principles are you taking and expanding on with influence? Well, influence is, is so key when you think about it. But, but I think even before we get to that, we've got to ask the question, what is influence really, right? Because mm-hmm. the word itself is so used these days that different people can really interpret it or define it, whether consciously or unconsciously in different ways. So on a very, very basic level, influence is simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. That's by definition, that's influence. Right. It's the definition, but it's not the, the essence of influence. The essence of influence is pull. Pull as opposed to push, as in how far can you push a rope? And we know the answer is not <laughs> very, at least not very fast or very yeah. fast, which is why great influencers don't push, right? They don't try and push themselves or push their ideas or push their will on others. They're not pushy. Uh, you, you never hear people say, wow, that David or that Mary, she is so influential. She has a lot of push with people. No, she's influential. She has a lot of pull with Mm -hmm. people. Pull is an attraction. Great influencers attract people first to themselves and only then to their ideas. And they do this again through, through pull. Now the question needs to be, how do you do that? Right. And it really begins by understanding, um, well, what I believe was Dale Carnegie's underlying premise in his classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And this is where he wrote, ultimately, people do things for their reasons, not our reasons. Mm-hmm. So the great influencer, who we would call the genuine influencer, ask themselves questions first to make sure they're focused the right way. Do they ask themselves, how does what I'm asking this other person to do, how does it align with their goals? How does it align with their wants, their needs, their desires? How does what what I want this other person to do, how does it align with their values? Uh, What problems am I helping them to solve? How am I helping to make their lives better? And when we ask ourselves these questions thoughtfully, uh, intelligently, Genuinely, authentically, not as a way to manipulate another person into doing our will, but as a way of building everyone in the process, now we've come a lot closer to really earning that person's commitment as opposed to trying to depend on some type of compliance or manipulation or, you know, uh, and so forth. So I think that's really when we talk about influence, it's so important because when we're not able to influence others, I mean, we can have many of the powerful character traits of, of success. We can be uh, hardworking and we can be, you know, empathetic and we can, we can be giving and, and we can be, uh, uh, have a lot of sense and we can be creative and we can be problem solving. All those things are wonderful. But if you're not able to influence, if you're not able to gently and authentically move people to the desired action, 
you're really going to find that, you know, reaching that level of stratospheric success is a lot harder. Yes, for sure. How does that relate to the, to the Go-Giver series of the Go-Giver Influencer? Well, in the, the original book, The Go-Giver, law number three was the law of influence, which said your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first, uh, not in a doormatty way or a martyrish or self-sacrificial way, but again, understanding that it's about the other person and finding out what, you know, what would move them. What are they? In The Go-Giver Influence or the book, we sort of took that to a much deeper level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it it became about how you can even deal with or work with difficult people and get the results that will make everyone, you know, come out ahead. We could say that when you think about it, genuine influence is the ability to get the results you want when dealing with others in such a way that they feel good about themselves, about the situation and about you. And it really came, you know, it came down to in the story, the two, prot- there were, in this case, there were two protagonists, two uh, protégés and two different mentors. But the two protagonists, uh, each wanted to do business with the other. And it seemed like it would have been a, you know, a marriage made in heaven in terms of the business. But they were so focused on themselves and not taking the time to understand the other person that it seemed like every time they met, they grew further apart not close mm-hmm. together. And so the, the two mentors, each individually taught them what we call the, you know, the secrets of, of genuine influence. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good way to have it. And for me, like when you talk about your influence starts with serving others first and figuring out a way to help them achieve what they need. Um, my show here is about the theme is networking and building p- p- personal relationships. And a lot of that starts with, People would go to uh, mixers or chambers, stuff like that. And, and I've been in this position. And the first time you, f- you go, you think, oh, my God, this is so nerve wracking. I got to trade cards, trade cards, trade cards. And I got to tell people what I do so that they will want to, to, to hire me. And you don't like going because you're not making any friends. You're not making any connections and nobody's returning your phone calls. But when you stop going with that mindset, you start going with this idea of like, hey, who are two or three people, maybe not even three, maybe just one or two people that I could have a five or 10 minute conversation with, get to know them a little bit, just say, hey, would you like to have coffee in one to two weeks and go talk shop about a little bit more depth about what you're up to? Then you go, you listen to them, what they're up to, and you think about who else do I know that either has a problem that they can solve or has the solution to the problem their challenge. And if you're always thinking about who can I introduce to who, who can I introduce to who, and not so much about like me and you, let's do something, but who within my network can I constantly connect with people? And you do this on repeat over time because it takes a lot of time to build up these relationships. They just don't happen overnight. You start going and your networking becomes this awful ungodly process to like, hey, I really like going to these things because I'm going to have really cool conversations with one or two people. And then after you start going for a year, all of a sudden they're not awkward and strange because you know everybody there. You're starting to be a regular. And then there's people you like haven't met that you're like, hey, I've seen you come to all these things. Let's go grab a coffee. And it just becomes so much easier. But then people remember, they go, hey, that Nate's he's always connecting me with other people. He's always helping me out. What can I do to reciprocate that? And it for me, that thing is where the power really elevates is, is, as helping others and serving more people. And that's why you want to grow your network because basically your value, to me, your value gets determined by how many problems you can solve. And if you have more resources to solve more problems, you can provide more value to more people. So, Very, very well said. You know, it's, it's funny because you talk about connecting people and that's such a, a wonderful thing to do. Um, and the more people you connect, really, the more influence you have. And yet your focus is on bringing them together and, and adding value to their lives. So one of the questions, you know, that I love asking someone when I first meet, once I get to know a little bit about them, and I, I tend to focus not on, you know, telling them about my business, because they don't care, but I ask them about theirs. And I'll ask, you know, what, how did, how did you get started in the mm-hmm. so-and-so business? People love answering that question. And it's not a question most people are ever asked. And I'll often ask, what do you enjoy most about it? Which again, kind of flies in the face of so. But then but what I call the one key question is 
how can I know if someone I'm speaking with would be a good prospective customer for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Or, and I love setting it up by saying, you know, I always love connecting good people with other good people. How can I know if someone I'm speaking with would be a good, you know, get client for you, customer for you, or someone you'd like to meet or good connection for you. And so again, what we've done is we've, we've, we've in an initial conversation rather than hitting them up about our business, which is what they're hearing from everyone. We're strictly focusing on, on them. And <coughs> excuse me, they understand that and they feel great about that. Now, of course, we're going to get their contact information and that's going to allow us to follow up and follow through, which is even mm-hmm. more important. Um, but you know, when we do that, now we've totally changed the entire frame of that, that networking. It becomes much more about what's in it for me to how much can I bring, how much value can I bring to others? Mm -hmm. There's something about it. Like I heard a quote from, I think it was Denzel Washington and he's, he's talking, I think at a graduation ceremony, he says, help others out. He says, there's nothing more selfish than the, than helping somebody else out and the reason is is because it feels so good and when you kind of look at you're like you know what it does feel good when when i accomplish individual personal goals to me they feel like tasks and check boxes and it's like okay what's next but when i'm like hey you're over here and your ideal client is is over at this company and i know that person and they're looking for uh what you're selling and i can connect you and both those people come back and say, thank you so much for the connection. That really helped me out. I'm like, that felt awesome. How can I do more of that? Like, that's what I love doing. And the more I felt kind of like realized that, I was like, hey, how can I do more of this? It, maybe it is self-serving to like do this thing, to chase this personal satisfaction from it. But it just feels more fulfilling than just chasing sure, right, what's right. in it for myself. Yeah, you're a connector. That's what connectors love to do. And of course, it's also very profitable because while you're not attached to the results coming back for you, how often do they? Yeah. Because remember, you're developing that know, like, and trust uh, with others. Yeah, for sure. So I like to ask my guests this question. Um, what does it mean to you to be all in on an idea or an outcome? I, yeah, I mean, I, I think I could answer that very, very simply in terms of what it means to me. I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but I think it means that you're committed to the result and to the activities it takes to get that result. Okay. Yes. And it doesn't mean you're attached because attachment is never a positive thing. It means your sense of happiness depends upon it. Um, but you are in, you know, you are all in. You're, you're not just interested, you are committed to this thing. And when that's the case, uh, you know, things that will happen to get in the way, but you're never going to accept that as the reason for stopping because Mm -hmm. that's not part of what being all in is all about. All in means you are all in and you're going to do your very best to see it through. Yes, for sure. You're not going to let the little setbacks hold you back. Your purpose is bigger than the little hiccups that come out throughout the day. I love that answer. So your books, um, they're available in, in multiple places. Who is the, the ideal reader? Who is the ideal audience for what um, your books are about? Well, for the go, you know, for endless referrals, entrepreneurs and salespeople, and it could be, <laughs> you know, salespeople of small companies or corporate salespeople, both. For the go giver, it started out as that same thing. It started out we thought the market was really just entrepreneurs and salespeople, which is a, you know, obviously a big market, but that's. Turned out, though, that, that uh, you know, everything from schools, houses of worship, uh, different or book clubs, you know, we're all. But really, you know, we would say entrepreneurs and small business people are kind of our key audience and key reader. But we've got a lot of corporations that have bought the book for their entire sales staff and leadership team. So, you know, it, it's sort of one of those that uh, it, it's not really a niche book. Right, mm-hmm. books are fine too, but I, I don't think this necessarily uh, necessarily is. I think there's a lot of value in the book for anybody within within any things. If you say, okay, it's strictly entrepreneurs, it's, it's strictly salespeople, but there's people that are doing that that mindset, I guess, of what Joe Josephine is doing, even for like a community organization or within. Um, 
maybe their their role as a teacher in education like they're still in this level of influence and getting people to buy into your beliefs and you're going to need some skills to do that and it really teaches you to lead from the heart lead from passion first lead from serving others first and it translates to so many things so i definitely think it's a must read book i'm so glad i was referred to it and i'm looking forward to uh, checking out the the next book in the series and i want to go back and get your endless referrals book because i just this is such a passion of mine of of learning to connect people better and learning better skills around it Very awesome good. so where can people go uh, and find you if they want to get connected Best place is my website, which is uh, Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. And we've awesome. got lots of fun resources there. Very cool. So all those links, well, that link will be in the show notes and you'll be able to reach out and connect. And if you uh, do uh, speak with Bob, please let him know where you found him. Say hi and uh, check his book out. Must read, must read for anybody that's out there looking to get better at connecting. Thank Thanks. you so much. Ah, appreciate you greatly. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.